Allegiance. And Austin, would you like to lead us tonight? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Steve, would you like to take a roll call? Yes, thank you, Chair Haney. Commissioner Becker. Here. Commissioner Roddick. Here. Chair Haney. Here. Commissioner Basor. Here. Commissioner Ford. Here. And uh, Commissioner uh, Itner and uh, Rylander McCrory are absent this evening. Okay, do we have any public comments? Doesn't seem so. All right, um, we are going to skip the approval of the minutes until uh, the February meeting, correct? Yes. And we have no presentations. Well, we are moving right along as usual, see? Told you we'd get things done. Huh? Um, it is the police department's turn. Would you like to come up and? Yeah, I'd love to, thank you. Chair Haney, commissioners, and Mayor Strobel, nice to see you tonight. Um, I put together kind of two months, and I'll throw some numbers at you, which I know is very boring, but just give you a quick rundown. Libby Park, uh, in the last, basically, in the last six weeks, uh, we were out there 108 times, just uh, 11 suspicious subject calls, a domestic, a couple juvenile problems, uh, one drunken public, one vandalism, and two narcotics calls. But Libby Park, and I talked to, uh, Steve about this McClary Libby Bowl is getting a lot of activity which is bleeding over into the park area uh, we got a group that just seems to be floating around we chased them out of the arcade and they just keep bouncing around so next stop will probably be Sarasota but we're working hard to identify these people and um, trying to any type violations uh, getting what we call a keep away from the parks and, and that's been pretty effective but we're getting <clears throat> uh, people we haven't seen before just hearing that Ojai is a wonderful place to come and oh, Libby <laughs> Park's a great place to be and great weather <laughs> yeah um, so at any rate uh, we have a new group that's come to town and we're just trying to identify them and make sure they're enjoying the park like most people would like to so um, but we're getting a lot of action at Libby Park right now Sarazoti we were there in the last six weeks or I should have mentioned at Libby Park on our records, we were there 91 times without being called. That's just going out, as I've talked before, just going out and doing regular patrols. And that's highly underestimated because we have some deputies that they, they'll spend two or three times a shift just, again, sourcing out this one group because that's kind of a nucleus of a problem we have here that we're working on. Sarazoti, we were out there 66 times in the last six weeks just to patrol the area. Uh, we did get four vandalism calls, uh, 18 calls of suspicious subjects, which is pretty good. And when I say good, that means the neighborhood is calling when they see something going on. It's either a suspicious subject or a, a subject disturbing. So we appreciate that because it's bringing attention to the fact that we need to be out there and contacting someone. Uh, one, keep the peace, check the well-being. We had one battery. Um, and then we had seven traffic issues, but that's just because of the street. Um, skate park, now for some reason, this only ran for a month. Just uh, either a glitch or an old report that I pulled up, but uh, we were there on our own 33 times. And uh, two found property, one theft report, and only three calls for suspicious subject, which is, you know, you think about the, all the activity happening Sarasota versus skate park. We're not getting the calls at the skate park of suspicious subject. What, so I guess it's good and bad, but I worked this last Sunday. I went by three times and we're gonna have to start stepping up again. The, there was just bikes and scooters and, uh, and there were parents watching these kids. Uh, so when I pulled them all out, the parents came in and, and they were very vocal that the board was going to change their mind and allow scooters and bikes in here. And I said, well, 
hasn't happened yet. Don't know if it will happen, but the sign's right there. You, you know, so um, I invited the one vocal parent. I said, they're having a meeting Thursday night. I want you to come in. So I hope I didn't foul you up with that. But uh, at any rate, it, it, the one thing about the skate park is the sign has been scratched away under bikes. The B was scratched off, so it says Ike. So one parent pointed out, well, it doesn't say bikes. Well, it does say it on the other sign. <laughs> so at any rate, it, it, I see that issue as being more than just a kid issue. These parents are watching them ride their bikes and scooters, you know, and there's the rules posted. So um, at any rate, I, I give a warning, came back three hours later, a different group of kids, but still. So I took pictures of everyone and... Um, and then on Monday, I sent, uh, Monday afternoon, I sent a deputy out to issue tickets. And um, so at any rate, we'll just have to start getting more enforcement out there. But uh, again, it's, it's, not, it's not just the kids. And we get little kids out there with parents you know, watching them break the rules. So Clough Park, uh, we had virtually no calls out there. We were out there uh, half a dozen times. And then uh, we did have uh, graffiti to the sign on November 30th, and uh, I think that was, let me see if there was anything else I wanted to bring up. No, uh, so I bored you with numbers. Do you have any questions to make this more interesting? <laughs> oh, yeah, pretty quiet, well, go ahead, Carla. Yes. Not a question, a comment. You had a really good write-up in the Ohio Valley News when you were volunteer program. Oh, very exciting. That was great coverage and they're just great people to work with. We're really happy to, uh, to be, we're really, we're the last volunteer group to actually get them badges. So to be able to get the support of the Rotary West to pay for the majority of that. And then the city also paid uh, to buy these volunteers, uh, the volunteer badges, which is really exciting. But a lot of the things we do, we're able to do because of their help. So, but thank you, it was a great article, yeah. Great program. Yeah, no, it really is. We're real excited about it. If I could just add something, thank you, Sergeant Arthur. Um, along with the increased activity of people hanging out in and around the bowl, loitering, for lack of a better term, um, and again, there's no law against loitering. So quite frankly, if people want to spend all day there, that's fine with us. The problem, obviously, is when they're breaking the law, drinking, using drugs, fighting, those types of things. But the other issues that we've seen since we've seen an increase in activity in this area is we're seeing more vandalism. Mm -hmm. So certainly not all of those individuals, but I think it's a safe to say that some of the people in that group are, you know, and we're finding everything from, you know, utility covers damaged and ripped off and, you know, graffiti and things like that and just general trash. So, um, Unfortunately, it's, it's not just that they're there engaging at times in criminal behavior. They're, they're also leaving a mark permanently on the bowl. Some of these people are um, damaging the cables, um, you know, whatnot. You can walk through there and you can see it pretty apparent. And it's been pretty marked change from just a few months ago. It, it is. It's strange how that works. I mean, things work in waves and you try to figure out what. Yeah. And we've talked. I, I, I contacted a couple of people not from this area, leaving the, uh, the bowl Sunday. And again, it's wonderful. It's what you want a park to be, right? You go and you enjoy it. But um, this group that we've contacted, are, are, they're just there and we'll find the trash and the alcohol containers and, and other things. Um, the one thing that I've noticed, and, and I'd like to bring it to your attention, uh, we've had success with, with it at the arcade and some of the businesses in town that have electrical receptacles open to the public, you don't think about it. You know, there's not a lock on it. A lot of the people that are loitering, and I don't want to say just because they're homeless, that's not, that's not even the issue, but a lot of these people, like at the bowl, there was probably 20, 20 folks there ranging from 16 years old up to 30 and they were in three different groups, but they had plugged in to electrical outlet and had an Xbox going. And 
uh, I mean, they had their beer with them and everything else. The, the 23-year-old had the beer, couldn't do anything about it. But the point is, that what brought them to that location was the utilities. So I advised them they're stealing from the city. Again, that's, you know, we're, we're talking. But the point is, if at all the parks, if, if the electrical outlets can be secured, or even at the, like the arcade, we had them shut off, the, and they can shut them on and off, the power, then you'll, you won't have the collection of people charging their iPhones or their iPads or their laptops. And um, so think about it. You've got a, a great place to be, free electricity, and they were having a good time. So it is just some from a crime prevention standpoint. If we are having problems in that location, which we are, then that's one thing you can do from what we call a septed process is just eliminate the attraction that is not bringing in the, the type of... Uh, activities that you're looking for hmm. so just just an idea and I understand that the power is now off or been secured in that location yeah so, so and it, it worked yep. it worked at the arcade and they just moved over and found another power source mm -hmm. so and then we also did the same at the museum we were able to what is our I, I thought we we're not allowed to have alcohol in that area I don't know I would have thought we couldn't have alcohol in general in the park so it's interesting, We've, I'm glad because I was just going to bring this point up as well. It's perhaps another tool that we can look at. Um, and we've asked the city attorney to look into this. Um, there is no open container law in the city. And I know we've looked at that. Um, and I may be off a little bit here on the fine points, but there is definitely not an open container law for the parks. So stop me if I'm wrong. You could show up. And if somebody had alcohol, you could confiscate that, but you couldn't cite them for drinking. Uh, well, I'll give you an example. At the bowl, the Xbox group of people, uh, next to the 23-year-old was two 40-ounce bottles of beer. One was half empty. The cap was on. Well, he's of legal age to drink. Right. And it's not like in a car where you have an open container, therefore it's a violation. So if he was drinking, right, great, then we've got him and we can cite him for that. And Let's our see. city attorney's been very helpful to get, again, these keep away orders. So we've, and just in the last week, we've got three more people we caught drinking at Libby Park, that, that these are uh, the same ones that we end up arresting for being drunk in public. So they start somewhere and... Um, it, it, it seems that we could, as a city organization, that we could go ahead and <clears throat> introduce a law that says no drinking within the park. I mean, we have it at, at Zarazoti. There's a sign out there that says no drinking in the park. Well, I, actually, what we need is we need to go a step beyond that that says no open containers. Oh, well, wh whatever it is. Yeah, that way. Uh, and only under license permit. Or, or right, whatever. without, yes, right, right, unless by, by uh, permit. I'm just uh, struck by the fact that someone could be walking down the sidewalks in Ojai with a brown bag and a beer in it and can be drinking. I'm just... Um, well, no, no. said he, he No, no, no I'm just saying drinking. can be drinking um, and then put the cap back on, keep it in the bag and keep walking. I'm just uh, flabbergasted. It just reminds me of, like, I think I'm in, the, in Las Vegas or I'm in Nevada or something like that. I would have thought for sure we had something on the books that said you couldn't do that on the streets much less in our parks i'm just um <laughs> i don't know what to say i'm <laughs> well anyway silly me huh yeah we're, we're working on um it, taking any tool we can to you know, just just make it a nice place for kids and families to be and uh absolutely absolutely okay yeah I love sitting up here. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have a conflict? Because, and I may be misremembering, but we do allow alcohol in the park. By permit. You want me to use the microphone? Yeah. yeah. We do allow alcohol in the park for... Um, Get this squared away here in a second. 
There we go. There you go, Mayor. For events at Lib Libby Bowl, correct? Correct. And so do we have a conflict in trying to uh, keep drinking out of the park since we allow it for events at Libby Bowl? Or, or is, do we have an outline that makes a clear distinction? Well, I know when we sign the, the permits for the alcohol, that's with the understanding of how it will be served and what the controls are, such as it's a, right. not to use an overused term, but like a beer garden, which some of the clubs will have at different events. It has to be a controlled environment. Uh, so I don't think it would be, because we have the right to cite someone for drinking or uh, for open container, uh, then if you were to have a, a permit and an event going, it wouldn't, uh, include that because there it's uh, special conditions okay so that's the the distinction is events at libby bold that where they will serve alcohol is done with a permit in advance correct and if that person were to let's say leave the designated area with their open container and then we find them drinking then there we have a uh, violation Okay. So they, they are there usually is a roped off area or a fenced in area and that's the area and that that's how you control the underage kids from getting in and, and um, you control who gets the alcohol. If they leave that designated area then then they're f fair game. I mean if you kind of look at it we, if we have some sort of a, a rule law or whatever uh, that they're caught and a few the few times that they do get caught end up being cited, arrested, or whatever, I think that's going to deter a lot of those people from sitting down there and, and doing that. I mean, I just, I, I can't believe that we don't have some sort of a uh, ordinance. Well, you know, why don't we, uh, um, uh, at the end of the meeting tonight, put that on our future agenda. Okay. And let's um, put that up as something that we'd like to talk about as a commission. I can tell you that some of the people that do loiter and are not there for the normal reasons you'd be there, alcohol is usually an issue. Uh, they, they will either have it with them or it'll be an empty can or a lot of the debris that's left when this crowd leaves is alcoholic containers. So we're trying, uh, trying other police tactics to identify them and see them drinking, but right now if we don't see them drinking, we're kind of at a loss. Mm -hmm. Well, th thank you. Sure. Sir. Pleasure. I'll see you next month. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, So public works update, is that going to be you, Steve, or yourself, please? Mr. Cotts? I'll, I'll go with the first one, and this is a, 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 drinking, a kind of drinking that's acceptable in the park. <laughs> uh, about a year ago, the Ojai Valley Tennis Club put in a refrigerated drinking uh, water fountain for the tennis tournament on the upper Libby Courts, and there was a, a bit of a jealousy by the... <laughs> by our own participants in the youth tennis program down at the lower courts with a just a regular old drinking fountain mm -hmm. non-refrigerated so uh, they made an appeal to the rec department to get a refrigerated one down at the lower courts and the uh, Ojai Tennis Club agreed to fund that refrigerate that refrigerated water fountain and then with the help of uh, our public works department both Public Works and some uh, folks from the tennis club install the water fountain. So Great. now we have a new refrigerated water fountain down at the Lower Libby Tennis Courts, which not only will benefit our own youth tennis program and adult uh, tennis program, but the tennis tournament when it comes back in April. So, uh, and then the kids from the kids from the program sent a nice uh, little thank you card to. Public Works and to the Rec Department Agreed. for providing that water fountain. So, if you happen to be down there at Lower Libby Courts, there's a new, <laughs> new drinking fountain down there. Did you happen to use it, Mr. Besor? I have not. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. But it's oh, well. There's a refrigerated water fountain <laughs> down there for your use. <laughs> uh, and then uh, even uh, more exciting are the. Uh, the project at Sarazoti Park. Uh, we are near completion. Uh, all the outside doors that uh, al along the Boyd Center, between the Boyd Center and the gymnasium, those doors that are 
to be scheduled to be replaced uh, finally came in. So um, there's that part of the project to be completed, but the front office is essentially or f is complete. We're, we're going to put a drop, uh, a, we got a drop box to go in there where people can drop in registrations or drop in after hour drop in money. So that's something that still needs to be installed. But everything else is done. We're just trying to figure out now logistically well, where to set the furniture and how we're going to set that office up once we get back in there and uh, what's going to be the most um, customer friendly way to set up the office. So that's kind of still the only thing holding us back from going back in there for the most part. I like the way we were greeted there this afternoon. What, what's that? I like the way we were greeted. The fact that when you walk in that, oh. that, that main door that you're talking to someone from the recreation staff mm -hmm. and that there's a sense of, um, of a professional environment. I was, I'm not saying you didn't have that in the past. Yeah. I'm just saying right there as you walk through, boom. You're meeting and greeting, and I just enjoyed it. Yes, and I, apparently that was the original reception registration office where we've put the temporary uh, registration. But we just, it, it is, it's, it's different, and it's, um, so that makes it a, a little more exciting, I guess, because it's not some place where we normally have the registration. but. Uh, they, we've been going back and forth a little bit about, gosh, would it be nice to just keep it there and use now that remodeled office for another use? But um, when there's a lot of activity activity in the office, programming wise, it makes it difficult for people who come into that area to actually register. And in the summer, even more so, it would be distracting and loud and. There's, there's a lot of camp activity that goes on in that hallway area, so it wouldn't quite work out. But I guess as a novelty, mm. it looks it looks inviting, well, it or it is me. inviting. Yeah, I, yeah. It worked for me. Like yeah. I said I enjoyed it. I would also think that it would allow um, you to conduct business differently at your end of the of the center, um, and even Matt's um, uh, ability to interact with the public. Again, it's. There are all these different functions and before you had them at that one main desk. So if someone was trying to register and someone was trying to discuss something else and someone was trying to do something else, you had all that conflict where it seems like, well, you guys will work it out. Yes, uh, uh, no doubt that we've really in, in appreciated that spot for that area for more than what it's been used for. I mean, I, I think you're right. We could look at using it not as a necessarily as a year-round uh, reception area, but at certain times of the year, it may be of benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, great. Yeah. So, um, so are we going to do a, a, a grand opening? Are we going to do a? Uh, I thought oh, we were going to have our house. Meeting. I thought uh, we were going to do a our uh, one of our meetings there if we could. Um, we, if the commission wanted to do that, we could take a look at that. Um, I think we might want to start thinking. Um, about uh, trying to do our open house event like right. we had talked about originally doing back last fall and then for various reasons we pushed it off and then then we had this project so we figured well it would make most sense to show off the new facility at that point so um thinking we should probably at the staff level discuss some potential dates and bring that forward to the commission uh, we meet again in a couple of weeks but i think it'd be good to do something in the spring while uh, while well, everything is still relatively fresh and right. it's not quite as exciting to announce it six months or nine months later we should try to strike while the iron is hot on that but I think that'd be a good time to do our open house and then and we can talk further about this and then maybe we could segue a little bit into having that you know discussion with with the other players of recreation in the valley uh, maybe we could hit two birds with one stone there. So yeah, I think that'd be great. So we could put that on. I think it would be a good discussion item for our February regular meeting. Right. And but in the meantime, if the commissioners could maybe be thinking about how they'd like to see that come together, and we will do the same. Great. Yeah, I think it'd be great to, for the public to actually get to see their um, 
their monies and resources and how they were utilized and in upgrading that you know our facility it's an old facility it is and it, for those who didn't catch it there was uh, I think a very nice and positive article in today's Ventura County Star uh, along with four or five pictures of the uh, the work and the facilities um, and some nice comments from uh, Mr. Kotsis and Mr. Grant and Mr. Clark. Uh, so if you didn't get a chance to see that, I would encourage you to try to find that. And if you need a copy of it, I could track it down and send it to you. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised I'm the sure Starfee be... Press had it over, o over the Ojai Valley News. Well, I'm sure that Soft Keys will have it posted up somewhere tomorrow. <laughs> most, most definitely. I'm going to scan and email uh, everyone in our database for sure. There you go. And I, I throw this in here really to be humorous um, because as a, as a rule, I do not comment or leave comments on any of the stories or article on the Ventura County site. That's not our job as city officials. Um, and of course, most of the time people are making comments and things like that. Um, however, I did make an exception today because somebody put a comment at the end of the article and they said, that's not Sophocles Kotsis in those pictures. And I thought, well, that's just not accurate. So that was easy enough to fix. So, so you will see a little comment at the end of the article from me stating that, yes, that is <laughs> that was Sophocles. Mr. Kotsis, our recreation manager in several of the photos. So. Not sure what they were seeing there, or who you really are. Maybe that's the other question. Uh, as I mentioned, but, uh, I, had, I had facial hair at the time. I don't Steve, know. And I, maybe that threw them off. Could be. Okay. So, um, are we going to move to discussion items? Or do we um, want to do the recreation staff report and come back to discussion items? What do you guys... Any? Did you cover everything on the public works update? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah there, were, yeah, there were just those two items. Steve. Great. So. Okay. Whatever um, order you would like to go and Chair Haney. Um, well, I think the discussions are going to, um, uh, 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 discussion item B is going to be pretty simple, but A, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do or, or um, tonight regarding that. Okay. So um, I think it'd be great while Sophocles had to Florida. Sure. Just move right to recreation staff report and let him go through it. Or okay. let you two share that again. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, as you know, the Basketball League is up and running. Uh, this coming Saturday will be in our third week of games. Uh, it's, it's picture day. So um, we have two, probably just over 270 uh, participants in the league now. We've been getting more middle school, late middle school arrivals into the league and uh, part of it's due to the fact that Matilla Haas basketball season is ending. So <laughs> we're seeing a trickle of middle school age uh, players coming into our league now. In uh, 270, a little over 270 is on par with what it was last year. We had, I think, 263. Um, the one minor frustration for us uh, it, for this league was we did have to turn some players away in the mostly in the third, fourth boys and uh, fifth, sixth boys uh, division because we lost some of our gym time at Matilla because they needed it for their own leagues. So we we could have been more around the 300 mark of participants or slightly over. So. Next year, we're going to work a little harder at getting uh, use of maybe some of the private school gyms. We contacted them, but uh, they just didn't have any space available. But I think with a little more pre-planning, um, in w now that we know we're not going to get all the time that we have in the past at the Matillaha gym, we'll we'll go and ask some of these private schools for some gym time. What is there a limit per team? Why, why would the yes we try not to put more than eight on a team just because of trying to get enough uh, uh, player time p playing time for each player once you get over eight players on a team you're you're really going to sacrifice playing time when you do that I, 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 I'm glad yeah. you're talking about this but I, I have a lot of those I have a lot of issues with with this program and how it's run so i'm not going to get into it tonight but i can just tell you this much difficult to practice with eight kids you need 
10 minimum, five on five. But aside from that, um, it's your program and you've had success sure. with it. And, um, and you'll keep get going. A, I, I understand. I don't want you to defend I, yourself. Right. I, I, well, let me just make one comment. There's a lot of push pa- pushback regarding playing time. And when you get 10 children on a team and you have to play every player at least at least two quarters, which is what we want to do. Be Otherwise, you will have some players in that league sitting on the bench and only, only playing two minutes a game. So as mathematically, a, it's very difficult, 10 players, to get them in all two quarters each. However, I, I see a different side of this, too. Um, as a parent, with the amount of players that they have, if two doesn't show up, then they're, you know, they're out, or, or if some other uh, players, so more on there. But I'm also seeing, too, that because we, they only have that many, they only have to substitute out just a couple kids. And what's happening is, is the people that are advanced players on the team never go out. And so the scores are, and, and witnessing the scores going up and up and up. And that's the only complaint that I've heard so far uh, by parents out there. Well, that was the case, but this year the, the top seeds, or maybe even it's the top two seed, but the top seed on each team has to set out at least one quarter. Actually, I take that back. Every player has to set out at least one quarter. Okay, that's not happening. I will guarantee you that. Well, that's up to the coach. <laughs> There's a uh, there's a coaching ethic then we're talking about here and there's also the referees and the scorers have to monitor that as well um, controlling coaching ethics is an issue whether it's basketball league soccer league exactly. baseball I, you I, name I understand it. that um, uh, uh, so does it happen in a game where you're a top player doesn't leave the game i bet it does and so that needs to be brought up to the coordinator of that program to say this coach did not sub out a player and that coach needs to be talked to well um getting back to this how do you having to turn children away Mm -hmm. um to a certain segment of your um groups of players Yes. If you had that 10-man roster, you may not have turned children away. So we may not have lost revenue, and we may have had um, more competition, and we may, those kids may have had fun in our program. So sure. hindsight's always... Uh, of course, and we can look at the league but I, I, in, in putting 10 players on every team. But the consensus from the majority of the coaches is that is not the desire of... Well, to, to do it that way. I, I know why the coaches don't want that. Is because of the example that I just gave. Well, I, I, I think you, I, I, I'm pretty sure we're talking about the exception rather than the rule. Well, again, eight kids and four of them show up to practice. You can't scrimmage. You, very difficult to practice. Six kids show up to a game, sometimes four. You're limited. There's just a lot of reasons why um, a 10-man program functions. And again, um, as far as coaching, this is a rec league, and you're in charge. Yes. Okay? The coaches are there to participate just as much as the children are. So if those are the guidelines, then those are the coaches that you'll get, and those are the coaches that will follow your guidelines. Yes, and those – guidelines have were in place prior to my arrival and they've been that way does that mean since i've been does that mean that's the best way to run the league we can like uh, like any other program we'll look at the rules and the setup and the format and if it isn't working we'll change it it isn't working only in respect to me telling you now that, oh, we had to put some, not allow some players in the league or that we were full. And once again, I'll say, you can say that for a lot of leagues. Uh, (laughs) If you don't register in a timely manner, there's a possibility that the league is full and you won't be able to play. And that's also a reality of 
league play in sports? Well, this is Pandora's box, so why don't we close yeah, it right sure. now? Because you're doing a great, you're doing a great, but you're doing a great job, and we appreciate that. Sure. So, uh, um, just two comments. Sure. One is you really have to look at the objective of the league. Like you said, it's a rec league. Mm -hmm. And two is nobody likes to hear what it used to be like. But I played in the Boyd Center. Fifteen players on a team. Everybody played one quarter. The fourth quarter, the coach could put in whoever he wanted. That's again, that's going back in time. But I didn't hear any parents argue at that time either, because the because the purpose of the league, a rec league for the kids to to play, not sure for competition you, and a trophy. Of course, and that's the way it is set up. Uh, you mentioned the one quarter, and you you talk about participant satisfaction. I, I think a child in a rec league should play more than one quarter, but you're saying. No, I do too. Back in the day, no, I do the too. Case but was, you have ten players; quarter. everybody plays two quarters. Well, no, yeah, like it's you not said, well. It's the lead. You just, you just make it a league exactly rule. It's not. It's well, not well. I, well, it's, no, I, 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 we we'll do the problem. math on it. We we can we we can continue this discussion yeah, yeah. at another time. But there's 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 <laughs> ten minute running four ten minute running quarters, and so th th we can do the math after this meeting to see okay. um, Pretty simple, if yeah. you can sure okay basketball okay. is you're doing a great job yeah thank I you. think so too thank I think you. the yeah. league is great and, and and the majority of parents are satisfied with the way the league is set I, up. I guess one last thing though did you guys eliminate that thing where uh, that uh, kids that are playing at the high school level can't come down and play in the park no. did you guys eliminate that or are you still allowing freshmen kids that are playing at Nordhoff to play in your league um, I'm not sure if we have Nordoff freshmen on rec league teams right now. I'm not Nord sure, Nord but I can find so Nordoff players, players on yeah, the freshman not, team right. playing in the seventh through ninth grade division. I'm not sure. I can't. Uh, okay. I was just wondering if you 100% answer that. For okay. You. I just wanted to conclude with I substitute teach and I talked to some of these kids and they love the league, so it's not. Yeah, no, it's, it's a fantastic it's league. I, I'm not but, yeah. saying anything bad about yeah. the league at all. I mean, it's sort of I, I, the what, the only thing that spurred this conversation on, of course, was me telling you that approximately 30 players didn't get to play. You know, I bet you if we filled this room with a bunch of men trying to tell you how to run this program, <laughs> you know, the first thing someone else would say is eliminate the three-point shot. Because kids don't learn fundamentals. All they want to do is stand behind the arc and throw the ball. And that's not teaching, that's not teaching young people how to play this game. But again, what's the league for? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, well, we, we, they, they get the great fundamental skills. They, we have great volunteer coaches. And truly, the majority of the league and the parents in this league are happy with the amount of playing time and the setup that they, the way it's set up. Okay, you won. <laughs> <laughs> For now. All right. Okay. Um, and so some of our uh, non-traditional, you know, big sport activities, uh, our newer activities uh, like ballet and Spanish and wilderness, these newer offerings and even fencing they're showing good numbers of participation. So we're excited about um, and I'm, the influx of participants in those activities we're getting, and I hope it has something to do with the, the postcard that went out and just a little bit of the extra marketing that we've been doing, whether it's Facebook or sending out email reminder blasts. So I think that's helped us a lot in participation numbers. Uh, gymnastics, uh, as always, is leading the charge in the in the number number game. They've got not as much as they usually do, but they have 166 currently 166 participants in that program. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much uh, the updates on the December January activities that we have going on. So between gymnastics and basketball, we could probably have another gym. 
Gosh, gymnastics would uh, just they, <laughs> at least that front they, basketball court I've been yeah. talking about. <laughs> Gym, <clears throat> gymnastics would love to go five days a week if they could. And uh, yep. boy, you want to talk about seeing a program really take off if they had that five days a week and the kind of competing that they could do with other other cities if they even had two that. outdoor basketball courts with lights don't even need a gym. Is that somewhere? I think this is somewhere on the agenda. <laughs> Capital improvement. Yeah, have you, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Gotta keep We're going to our, that. Yeah. We're gonna get to that. <laughs> okay. Um, so a little while back, we talked about uh, tracking participation numbers, and we started that tracking in September. So um, we have two sorts of categories. We have our drop-in programs, and then we have our session, you know, our eight-week session, our six week session programs so um, since September in tracking we're at about 400 participants per month on the drop-in so that's that's drop-in Zumba we have drop-in CrossFit uh, uh, dodgeball we had 21 kids in dodgeball this last Friday so mm. all those different kinds of drop-in programs we Again, we average about 400 a month just in drop-in. Uh, preliminarily, I, I tried to sort out then on a session basis the same kind of parameters per month. And we're at about 270 participants who register in any session-related activities. So there's quite a bit of traffic uh, that we're realizing 670 people in a month's time coming through the rec department participating in some activity. So those numbers are encouraging. So Questions starting in September, that. is that your fall program? Is that what you would call that? How, why did well, you choose September? Why do we, well, just because that's when we Because decided, that's hey, when I said, hey, we should start tracking, start our, tracking our, participation, our, numbers. <laughs> our participant numbers, and we haven't done that in the past, so let's do that so that okay. we have well, some I data. was just wondering what, the, what yeah. the, um, if, fall, if your fall program came out and that was the first thing that you started tracking was that program and how many sign-ups and what well, the participants, that's all. Kind of yeah, 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 coincidentally and timing-wise, it, it sort of worked that way in conjunction with the activity guide, but it wasn't a, yeah, I mean, we, we probably should have been doing it long ago. If, and it's been a really nice exercise and look at every, <laughs> look at the number of people that participate in our programs. And it's uh, imp impressive, in my opinion, about how many people use that facility. Well, I'm sure it also helps you to, to, to determine uh, which programs are successful and which ones aren't, which ones you want to keep, which ones need a little more yep. nudging or some, some um, inner action right. so that they grow. Right. I'm sure it's, it's, it's got to be a, a, a tool that is going to help you do a number of things for the, for, your, for the programs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So those, 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 yeah, again, those numbers are encouraging. And I'll, I'll move down to the next item on there unless you want to add something steve Are you, no you, okay um the mid-year revenue uh in expense well we'll start with the revenue so reflected in the numbers that i just uh boasted about um we were looking over the mid-year we're at the mid-year uh, at this point so july 1st to uh december the end of december uh, we're twenty thousand dollars ahead of last year's outstanding. Number. So we're we're at two hundred and five thousand, with probably a few thousand dollars that haven't been uh, completely uh, put into the to the system <coughs> through half of the fiscal year. So if those numbers continue on the same path, you optimistically we could be looking at double what the the projection or double what the uh, revenue is so maybe 410 we've projected to take in three hundred and sixty thousand for this fiscal year so uh, without sounding overconfident we could double our revenue in the next six months uh, and, and on the expense side we're right at about 53% spent of our budget. So 
Great. We've taken a little more revenue than expected, and we've spent a, a little more money on, <coughs> on the program, <coughs> which, which kind of usually go hand in hand. <laughs> as no, the so revenue increases, the expense goes up a little bit as well. Great. Great job. So um, at the staff level, we met and reviewed the budget numbers just on Wednesday of this week. And there's still a few um, pieces and checks that you know that we need to get to some firmer numbers, although we know where we are in terms of the big picture. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, I think by the February meeting, we'll, we can sh actually have some numbers that we feel confident that we can share with the commission. Great. Now your tracking system, once it's implemented in a, for a full year, is that going to help you to uh, determine? Uh, the areas that you increased revenue um, and areas that you may have um, broke even or, or loss? Is that, I, I know that's not the goal of it, but that could be one of those. Um, what do you contribute the plus $20,000 to? Well, well, bringing back the flag football program, uh, that brought in $5,000 that we hadn't in the past. Well, um, we're just generally but I up think across it's gen the board. Yeah, I think it's just a That's general. A feeling, huh? Yes, it is. it is. It's just a general That's increase in participation numbers. Uh, well, the economy is better, too. Yeah. People have, have a little more. Yeah, that. certainly it's the economy. I, I think another small factor has probably been some of our increased marketing and in the postcard. Um, I had We had a nice story that was relayed to us about um, – somebody who's actually a friend of somebody in the apartment and they but you know how it goes sometimes you don't think to mention things and then somebody gets a postcard and they go oh fencing oh well maybe my nine-year-old would want to do fencing hmm. and there they were signed up and in the class so <laughs> great um you know a little bit every little bit helps a little certainly um yeah well i think things have leveled off too i don't think there's as much animosity as there was at a no. certain time. I think that um, you guys away. are moving in a great direction. Um, again, if programming's up, the facility's being maintained better. Um, Greg's doing an incredible job. I'm, I mean, it's just all pluses. So it doesn't surprise me that you guys would be up in revenue too. You guys, you guys yeah. are doing a great yeah. job. Uh, we're, we're excited about the direction the department is taking, of course, and um, we there's a positive energy in that Great. building and with the people that are in that department and so we're excited about even the potential more potential that it has give a little credit to the facebook page too yeah which was something that this commission uh i know had wanted to see for some time so i think all of those little right. factors add up well good job yep well hopefully you guys can uh, pop in at any time feel free to come in uh grab that activity guide and look at some of the programs that are happening, whether it's the ballet class or uh, we have a Spanish club. We've got 10 kids enrolled in our, our Spanish uh, club class. Uh, and it's it, that's another new class that just kind of took off. Um, we started Kung, youth Kung Fu out at three kids and now there's 20 kids in that class. So um, they, They've started out small, and then they've just blossomed, it seems like, over the past three or four months. Hmm. Um, and then the last on that list of uh, reports is the capital improvement plans update. <coughs> I'm not sure, Steve, if you have something to share on that. Um, the committee basically, I think, just needs to get back together. Um, and it's a lot of it. I think the focus was playgrounds and right. trying to um establish a plan for you know the playground replacement at libby park and trying to coordinate that with the shade structure and i think um the reason it's on there is just to say who the people the folks who are on that committee uh need to get back together again and uh come up with a plan of in, and in addition to that I, I think one of the things that i wanted to ask tonight was um you know, I, I think we need to come up with some type of a logical process here as we go forward and start looking at, you know, spending money on new play structures and things like that. Because uh, there's a lot of different things that we can do. There's a lot of different options. There's a lot of new things out there. 
So at least from my perspective, I don't feel comfortable at a staff level coming up with some type of recommendation when we haven't heard from the, the, the community, from the public. Right. Um, I, would, I, I would hate to get you know, through a, a process where, I mean, again, staff and the commission and you know, all well-meaning, all well thought out necessarily, but it's kind of tough for us to say what we think everybody might want to see in terms of playground structures or what type of equipment they're looking for, what the needs are. So I would think that it would be good uh, if the commission supports this idea to try to really do some some structured public outreach, whether it's focus groups or we have a meeting and we just in, you know invite members of the public to to come and share their opinions, or or maybe we create something more like a working group than out of that where you know we actually consider some of the uh, the various options that are out there. Um, because, like I said, there's 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 a lot out there uh, in terms of playground options. I think there's a lot more than there was 10 or 20, certainly 40 years ago. Um, you know, you can't have that merry-go-round thing with the right. bolt that pops out anymore. Right. Anyways, um, so I, I right. wanted to get a little f direction and feedback from the commission on a how you think we should be trying to approach something like that. Um, and B, how should we do it? Well, do we want to go around the table? I, I, I speak a lot. I, 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 I give you a lot of things right now off the top of my head. Okay. Um, I know the first thing is that when we've had when we've had commission meetings at um, Sarasota, we've, we've had a lot more people show up than when we have them here. And I think so. That's one thing that we could probably do something there. The other thing is we had talked about maybe doing more than one um, commission meeting um, a month. And again, maybe uh, doing one here and doing one at Sarasota might benefit the public or the participants or um, the outreach to us. So um, but th that's the first thing that comes to my mind. And then the second thing is what we had talked about with being the hub of the recreation of the Valley and getting uh, all of the other players in the community involved. Um, you know, that's... I think as we tackle that, that we're going to be opening ourselves up to more community involvement also. So I, I, um, you guys have anything to add to that? Yeah. The only thing I can think of, too, is, is um, probably need to reach out more to the schools and at each grade level. Um, make the, you know, notify the principal that we're looking for kids that want to give us uh, input. And stuff and maybe we can get more from them I mean Austin you you're out there with the young kids they I'm sure they tell you exactly what they want and what they w want to look at and, and everything and then you have it more of a community broadened um, uh, group yeah, that's exactly the type of ideas I'm looking for so um, I again just want to throw that out there and see what thoughts and ideas that you might have and just to make sure that we're, we're going forward with the process that uh, um, that is satisfactory to the commission. Well, I think it's a great idea. I, um, I, again, it's it, it just seems to me it's always better when it comes from them and not from us. Well, especially right, especially early in the process. Yeah, right? um, but ultimately, um, like any other thing, there's eight thousand people in this community, and there might be ten or twelve that show up that have an idea. True. So uh, they're looking for leadership from this commission as well as from the city council and leading them and directing them and providing um, some concrete ideas for them to say, yeah, that's a good idea, or I hadn't thought of that one. So um, it's not just gonna be the community, I think it's gonna um, be a, a led from sure from within. Definitely, yeah, well, what we could do is we could, we could put together, you know, several different packages or, you know, just kind well, of your five lead, year lead plan the discussion would, through, through Your five-year yeah. plan would be a, a great stati starting point mm -hmm. and, and putting that on our, on our Facebook. Here, you know, here's our future direction of our department. Please comment. I mean, bingo, there you got how many participants looking at what we're looking at. And boom, there's direct feedback. Can, in, can the uh, IT department with the city put a link uh, on the recreation site that they could click onto and open that up to take a look at if people wanted to view it? 
What would we be linking to? Our plan. What our, oh, you know, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. I misunderstood you for a second there. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's very easy to do. Okay. I think that'd be somewhere where we could start, too. Yeah. You know, there is a lot of people. I, I see a lot more of the, the uh, younger folks in town really wanting to um, be involved in a lot of things. I know the parents are really involved with their kids lately. And you see that out there with, with uh, mm -hmm. at the rec center. Um, I, it's almost like a different um, group of people coming in and, and us older guys and stuff are sitting out here on the end and everything, but we, we're going to have everybody out there um, that is, is going to participate. And I think if you give them the chance, they're going to do it. So. Right. Okay. Sorry about that. Did we answer your, your question? I think so. <laughs> but if you have any specific suggestions or thoughts right. on how we can best accomplish that, I'd be, be all ears. So. Okay. Um, all right. So we've got uh, capital improvements. Did you guys want to uh, discuss any more on that? Um, uh, like you said, um, instead of you generating that from um, the top down, we want to generate it from the bottom up. That's what I heard. So we need to figure out how to get more public um, input. I do have some input, actually. Uh, it's spoken to a couple people, and it's honestly about a basketball court, a lighted basketball court, because there's some kids who want to play shoe hoops at night, and they end up going to, like, Topa Topa or some school, and they have to, like, jump the fence, go play basketball there, and they end up getting kicked out by the cops. Where do they play basketball? And so from what I've heard is they want a lighted basketball court. And I know we've discussed that at Sarzati. And right. I talked to Bob Daddy, or actually he talked to me, and he said, you know, if you, uh, I might be able to get the funding for that. So, you know, that's something that I'm going to okay. try to inquire. Well, I could not agree with you more. Um, and I also agree that it is a deficit right now. Um, as it currently stands, right or wrong, uh, that project is on the fiscal year 14-15 capital improvement plan. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so if that holds, uh, we're hoping to get that built and in the ground sometime next fiscal year. So I think between now and then, what we're trying to do is figure out how do we, you know, where's the best location for that? What yeah. are the dimensions? Do we do a full court? Do we try to, you know, that all that type of thing? Yeah. Um, well, I, I think also, Stephen, that is the fact that doing these capital improvements, I think one of the things we talked about was having not necessarily a um, architecturally designed master plan, but we've got to be able to look at our facilities and instead of just hodgepodging a court here or this here or that there, that there's some thought and there's some consideration put behind how it um, impacts all phases of the facility and, um, you know, the, again, the best place for it. And th there's right. just a lot that has to go to it other than, it, Austin, I'm along with, I'm with you 100%. I'd oh, yeah. put it right yeah. behind the building, put the lights up, you got power and move on. But there's other things that we, that when you do that, you might impact. Yeah, so, yeah I understand that. Um, so I'm thinking that th that was something else that we had talked about doing as a, well, a commission. correct me if I'm wrong, when we uh, had that committee that we met and we did go over all that stuff, Greg was putting together uh, basically a site plan. Right. Of where, yeah, and we were working in where everything was going to go. And, you know, there is there is some obstacles out there, like a, maybe a 250-year-old oak tree, I guess, is out there. Right. That we've got to be careful and work around. Um, but there is, we were doing that, and I think it's probably yes. a good time to probably get the meeting or get the group back together and let's let's uh, start right. exploring I, more stuff. I just this week got a got to see a couple of the the drafts for the the park plans, and so we're working on that at the staff level. And but I think you're right; it'd be good to to get that committee together again because um, we're going to have to make some decisions pretty soon about where we'd like to start putting some of these things. And in, in the meantime, um, can we, can Austin's, um, Bob Daddy, is that who it was? Yeah, Are we allowed for him to raise funds for this, or we, is this something that we want to stay with? Absolutely, and, and we've been in, we have had 
both Greg and I have had many conversations with with Mr. Daddy, oh, and yes. uh, and he's I believe in this particular case he's representing the Ohio Civic Association, and we have had some conversations back and forth with the group, and um, just trying to find something that fits what the group would like to do. Great. So, and whether that would be something they would fund or not, I, I don't know for sure at this point. Um, I, I know we've let Mr. Daddy know that it's on the, the capital improvement plan for our next fiscal year at this time. Good. But uh, certainly, um, I mean, I, I can't speak for the council, but I, I don't think we're going to be uh, turning down donations um, for needed public facilities. No, we'll not be turning I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, shall we move up to uh, our discussion items? And do we want to? Why don't we um, speak to number uh, B first? The report of the. Uh, ad hoc committee to develop a draft policy on the naming of city facilities and memorials so that uh, committee actually met this afternoon uh, we were finally able to get together and we started to do some preliminary work uh, we looked at the uh, policies that are in place in in several different communities including several in california and um, so we we spent some time looking at those today and we are going to meet again in a couple of weeks. Uh, we've all got our homework assignment now. We're going to go through these and mark them up and uh, mm -hmm. note what we like and what we don't like and uh, see if, if uh, we can perhaps pick one and for, for nothing else. It's just as a model to, to move <coughs> forward to, to build some type of a draft policy. Um, so th we will be meeting again, I believe, on the same date that we have the February commission meeting. Right, um, so I would say then uh, I think our plan was that we would then hopefully bring something forward at the March meeting for the entire commission to take a look at right and um, and that's where we are with that so but there's some good policies out there um, uh, but it, I think it, it it definitely as you read through them you, you definitely get get a sense I think that it's very helpful to have something like that on the books to right. avoid everything from hurt feelings to getting overwhelmed with, you know, memorials and namings and, and what like that. Um, and then, you know, how, you know, how do you develop criteria for, for publicly naming, um, you know, as we said, you know, I'm, I'm sure we, we all in our own lives could point to a favorite aunt or an uncle or a teacher or somebody who's, you know, a great person and had a great impact on our life. But does that necessarily mean that it rises to the level of, of, a, of a public memorial? Um, right. You know, if it, if it means something to one person, is that something that really is a, is a public memorial? Or should it fall more to, to those things where, you know, there are a number of people that recognize, you know, the contributions that they made to the community? So those are some of the questions. Right. Um, and they can be a little sticky, but um, I think we're, we're working through it. Right. And then ultimately, if we uh, get to an agreement at the commission level, uh, we'll take that recommendation to the council for its consideration. Right. We'll so hopefully, it. so we'll always going to come back to the council. So sooner or later, you're going to you'll be back in charge of that. You're in charge of it already, but you'll be in more charge. Actually, it did come before the council. We shipped it back to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> but, you. Uh, I, this is just an individual preference. Rather than focus on uh, naming a city building or a facility after an in individual per person, I like the idea of using um, memorial tiles or benches or, or whatever to generate funds uh, to do improvements rather than, so I'm, I'm more inclined toward um, memorial walls, this type of thing, rather than naming facilities. But I'm sure you guys will come up with a great plan. Well, I, th I, th I think along with that, that's a, an interesting idea because we ha hadn't really discussed that. But we're also looking at the levels of these memorials. Like if, like if someone wanted to 
name a uh, rec center room you know what level does that rise to versus renaming the rec center so there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of discussion on on the on the depth and the, the variables that go along with memorials and naming and I would be absolutely in, in support of especially if someone wanted to build a new gymnasium gymnasium to name it after that person if they contribute the entire cost of the construction I think that'd be great yeah wonderful idea thank you <laughs> this is being broadcast live right um, yeah. so uh, any willing sign up now sign up now <laughs> okay there is a need for a gymnasium here a new gymnasium a large gymnasium yes. okay with a pool with a pool <laughs> an indoor pool <laughs> wow excellent dream the dream yeah they, we can dream that's dream fine. the dream that's yeah. seriously that's what my father-in-law uh, uh you know he was an architect and that's what he said when he talked to his clients is dream the dream and then bring it back to reality okay steve um shall we go to the next one yes and please don't misinterpret any of my facial expressions to be a reaction to anything that anybody's saying i'm just dealing with a bit of a, a headache at the moment so uh, if I'm wincing, it's not because you're saying anything. Um, thank you, Chair Haney. So um, we are continuing with the discussion item. Um, this is 8A, the review of the duties of the Parks and Recreation Commission. And we, um, we started out on kind of the, the light side of this, and we did have some discussion um, on this at the December meeting, um, and we wanted to kind of start easy and then move on to some of the, the more meatier topics. So um, at the last meeting, because um, I know a couple of you weren't here, um, what we did is we basically got through section 24101, and uh, I think that's pretty cut and dry. On the membership section, um, we had some discussion about the, the youth member. The, the current code states that they have to be a full-time uh, junior or senior from a high school located within Ojai Valley. So, I, and there were some comments from a, a couple commissioners um, that perhaps the requirement that they um, attend a school in the Ojai Valley be removed and that the requirement would be that they are a student or a youth who lives in the Ojai Valley. So that would, uh, you know, would, would not mean that they would necessarily have to attend a school within the Ojai Valley, just that they be a youth that resides right. in the Ojai Valley. So that, that was discussed. Um, uh, so I don't know if there's any further comments on, on that section before we move along. Well, I'd personally like to um, have a full body here when we discuss or we want to vote or we want to implement something. Um, just I, I'm kind of thinking that maybe uh, I, I, I know that the two commissioners that are here tonight were really wanting to be able to be involved in this. this uh, um, sure. And, and, and we can certainly, uh, whatever the commissioner's right. pleasure on, on that. I mean, I um, and, and just for clarification, we're not asking for any formal direction or decision tonight. Right. Um, we talked about trying to take this kind of slow and so that we could actually have the conversation about it. Um, however, I understand certainly um, what the commissioner and the chair are stating. Um, if you would prefer to not even get into this discussion uh, until we have the, the full commission here, that's, that's certainly the commission's prerogative. Well, but, uh, if you want to. My, my only comment on that, I'm sorry, Steve, my only comment on that is that because we had discussed this. Um, and and that we had all pretty much uh, spoke about how we felt about it. Um, it's something that I think that we could bring up and maybe have a, another five minute discussion on as a whole, and then uh, do some type of move movement towards um, solidifying that section. So th that's all I'm. Uh, that's I think what I'm trying to say is I don't think I don't have any more to say on it. Do you, do any of you guys have? So I, but I'd like to have um, uh, Sunday and, and uh, 
and um, sage. and sage. Ms. Sittner, I was going to say, um, be a part of that. So we could pick another subject and just kind of kick it around tonight. And, and uh, you know, there is one that comes to mind, and it's interesting for me especially, is the uh, attendance issue. I think I'd like to see that tightened up. And uh, I don't know if that's any part of this body of paper that we have in us, but it would sure make me more accountable. Um, uh, uh, so I don't know if it is, if there's an attendance guideline, but if we'd like to discuss that tonight, I'd be more than open to that. There currently is not. And um, please correct me, Mayor Strobel, if I have this incorrect. There was discussion at the most recent city council meeting about commission attendance. And uh, I, I believe the direction that was given at that time was that um, we would be reporting on absences to the council uh, and then it would be, um, you know, again, really just a reporting role to the council at this point and um, what the council would do with that information, um, we're not sure. Okay, I'll, I'll add a little to that and that is if there are three missed meetings, three consecutive meetings missed, then the council would like that brought to our attention. If there are six missed meetings in a 12 month period, we would like that brought to our attention. If there's a need for a, uh, a commissioner to have a leave of absence, that's an entirely different issue. That's something that the can come before the council we you know grant a six month or a year mm -hmm. but we are tightening up the attendance so three consecutive meetings we want it brought to the attention of the council six missed meetings in a year we want it brought to the council's attention yeah and see i wouldn't mind adopting those actually into our policy that would be um, that's what I, that, that's uh, that's all I'm saying is I know that uh, um, it, due to this football thing I'm involved with that I missed the meetings in fact I can't remember the last time I was here um, um, but I was here in December I think I was I missed the December um, banquet but all I'm trying to say is for me it doesn't hurt for me to personally have guidelines and and um, if I've committed to be um, on this commission, then I need to be committed 100% to the rules and the guidelines and um, the integrity of the commission. You know, if that means three absences, um, instead of it just coming to you, it actually should be discussed maybe in private from the chair to someone. Um, but there's, there's ways of having dialogue about attendance and responsibilities and involvement um, with the commission. Aside from what you and the city council would like. I would think each commission would, should have a, a, a strong voice as to what they expect of each of their members and, and, uh, and what they do on the commissions. And I'd like to be clear that that doesn't mean an automatic removal. Right. It's just that if, if this type of issue uh, comes up, then we want it brought before the council. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be all that's going to be required to find resolution. Okay. See, so, so we can have that language built into ours. Too. Right. Right. If that's possible, Steve. Uh, sure. Yeah, we can um, we can we can put that you know in in our final list of things here in terms of the recommendation on on changes to the code. And um, we can run that up the flagpole. Great. See, so we discussed the tenancy. We're getting things done here. This is, it's, it's funny. I look at this all white male board up here. And it's like, where's the diversity in this? <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so Steve, what else um, would you like? Should we touch on uh, just the next article? Um, Terms? So I... I I believe we also reviewed the the terms at the last meeting, uh, and I and I, I didn't have any didn't see any comments or concerns. That was basically we right, we all agreed on that one. Right, right. Um, as well as the staggering. 
So I think the part that I, I'd like to have a conversation about tonight, and am I, am I correct and you do want to go forward with this? Or Mr. Do you, Chair, I'd like to add something before you move past the uh, terms. Uh, the City Council just finished having a overall discussion on this. And one of the questions that came before the City Council was whether or not to reduce the number of commission members from five to seven. From Part of it was on particular commissions, etc. I'm sorry, uh, reduce it from seven to five. And the council voted to retain seven members. So I don't know if that helps you with your discussion, but it was something that was brought up and discussed. Are all commissions right now reviewing their um, their status, I guess? Is that what we would call this? Not particularly, no. Just us. Uh, the, the, the Arts Commission, but I would say we're from a really different scope. They, they recently went through, and it's been a long process, they, they recently went through and um, worked on and updated the public art code, which, which then was brought to council and, and was adopted. Um, however, the, that code doesn't, didn't really get into to, to membership or anything like that. So um, I think we, we wanted to look at this um, in, in light of some of the things that had occurred in the past. And I, I guess I would say perhaps some of the misunderstandings of the, the roles and the responsibilities and duties. I would say from staff's perspective, we saw occasions where it appeared that the commission um, was being put in a situation where they felt like they were acting more or less like a board of directors as opposed uh, to a oh. advisory committee right. uh, to the city council. However, having said that, when you read through the powers and duties of the commission, it does imply that it does operate more or less like a board of directors. So I, 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 at, at this point, as we said, we wanted to really kind of go mm -hmm. through and uh, have a discussion and explore this. Um, I, I, can, I can certainly share with you what's, what some of staff's concerns are with the, with the powers and duties uh, in the section. Um, and the uh, interesting, before I d dig into that, the, um, the handouts that I gave you tonight, and I didn't keep one, but I was, um, just peek at yours real quick. As I pulled this out of the code, I noticed that there, uh, it had the, the one side of the page had the last part of the previous section in the chapter mm -hmm. um, and it's it's the section that has to do with the administration and the city manager right so the as I the interference as I saw that I realized that I think this kind of points to the crux of the issue um, although I don't like the way that's necessarily worded um, but from staff's perspective, we see that some of the, the powers and duties are in conflict with other sections of the code, in particular, and, and this I think is a, is a good example of one. Um, so I, what I wanted to do at this point was just kind of have a conversation, talk a little bit about what the city manager and staff's perspective is on this. And then I'm not sure that we as staff fully understand or have fully heard from the commission so i'm not even sure that we're speaking the same language yet if that makes sense um the 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 big issue um or the the real concern that that staff sees is the section 2-4 1.04 b which uh, says to aid and advise the council or city manager in the selection of properly qualified personnel to conduct the recreation program of the city. I think part of the issue with that is it's 
perhaps an overly broad statement. Um, and then in, and then it immediately seems to um, run afoul with other sections of the codes and what more or less is considered to be the traditional role of the city manager. So for example, if you go, and I'm stealing your sheet here, if you go back just that page before, and this is why I thought it would be interesting to leave it in here, um, and again, I'm just trying to point out um, what, it, what seems to be a conflict to us. And again, this, this section is, is talking about council members, not commissioners, but actually your elected council members, who of course are the hiring, firing authority for the city manager. But this spells out, um, this 2.307, that no member of the council um, shall, and I'm leaving out some of the words, influence the city manager in the making or removal of any appointment or the purchase of supplies. We're not talking about the purchase of supplies. So the, the, the problem that we've seen from, from staff's point of view is we have a city manager. We have a city manager. We, we, are in a, we have a, a council manager form of government. The city council are the policy makers. They set the policy. We follow it. They also hire and fire what are arguably, easily arguably, the, the two most important positions in the city, which are the city manager, obviously, and the city attorney. Of course, the city attorney's job is to uh, advise the council and the staff and the conduct of city business. Uh, the city manager's uh, role, um, at least in California, in the council member form of government, has traditionally been been viewed as the buck stops there with the city manager in terms of personnel. Um, they are the ultimate hiring authority. They are the ultimate firing authority. Um, they have control over the the budget. So, um, I, I think the concern that we would have is. Well, as it is, as it stands right now, as I had said before, it, it seems like the current code is really in conflict with the way we operate, with the way that the city manager operates. So I, I before I get any further or let out any more rope, <laughs> I th <Yeah>. think <laughs> what would be helpful before I start making assumptions on things is to hear from the commissioners in terms of what you understand this section 2-4104 to be, and then ultimately what, what is it that the commission would, would like to see. Um, so we, you know, we have this section here which says to aid and advise the council or city manager in the selection of properly qualified personnel to conduct the recreation program of the city. Now even, and that sentence seems a bit odd to me because the council does not generally select properly qualified personnel beyond the city manager and the city attorney. So I, I think it's a question of, if we have a council manager form of government, what is the what is the commission's expectation or desire in terms of the hiring process, Mr. Chair? Bef before you go into your discussion, I, I just want to comment from the the um, from the council members. I want to make sure that we're we're clear. The council member. The council member's intent of some of the changes that we've been making is to create a more direct line of communication between the commissioners and the city council. We've had, um, we've had instances where communication has been uh, corrupted by going from the commission through staff to council because it goes through a specific set of filters when that happens. And so what the council wants is a, a more direct, a clear communication with our commissioners. I agree with Mr. McClary that 2-4104 uh, is uh, 
is not properly done because the restriction on the city council is to not micromanage the city manager. The commission only hires and fires the city manager and the city attorney. City manager does all other hiring and firing without interference from the council. So I agree that probably should be reworded, but I just wanted to let you know that the council isn't trying to interfere, but we want to make sure that we have a clean communication between the commissioners and your recommendation and the city council. Well, I'll, um, it's, I just want to make this statement. It sounds like there's two things going on here. The city council is writing their policies and procedures regarding commissions, and we as a commission are writing ours. And um, ultimately, I'm just, that's my sense right now, um, but ultimately what I believe is whatever the city council writes into their policies and procedures would just be sent down to each commission. So if you change that wording in your policy, to me it would automatically be written into ours. Um, having said that, I, I don't see a conflict. I'm just saying that we're both doing something at the same time, and, um, and that's okay. Getting back to hiring and firing, I think every one of us accepts the fact that the city manager hires and fires. Um, and I also think that the city manager may pull into, um, he may want, yeah, yeah, let's do that. My experience at, at this is that if I'm hiring someone, I'm going to set up a board to interview. Um, I don't know how the city manager does his, but I would think that if he was going to hire Steve per se, or fill Steve's position, that he might put together three or four people to do the interview process with him. And then ultimately, it's the city manager's responsibility to choose the right person. So that to me is kind of what this is saying as far as the advice side of it is that if you were hiring a new recreation director, that it would be okay for the city manager to ask one of the commissioners, one of the council people, and maybe someone from the public to sit on an interview board, conduct the interview, and then ultimately let him make his selection. That's my sense of what um, is, <coughs> this means. And also more importantly is at Steve's level when he was interviewing part-time positions or a full-time staff, that again, that the recreation director might ask a commissioner or might ask um, a city council person to sit in on the interview process and again ultimately Steve or Sophocles is going to have the ultimate say in who does the hiring we're just there as far as the is as far as the interview process that's my take of what this is um, and I'll open the floor to to anyone else I, I totally agree I'm sorry, I've probably created some confusion there. That that I only carried that over from the previous section to kind of illustrate a point. Oh, oh, okay. That that actually falls under the city administration section and not under the parks commission. Oh, okay. I apo apologize oh, for that confusion, yeah. Commissioner. But Carlin, isn't that how we do it right now? There is an interview process, even okay. for the commissioners. I, and they I, all I think we're talking about two different issues. Okay. Um, and the way this reads, it says to advise the council or city manager in the selection of properly qualified personnel to conduct recreation programs. I think that's an error. Anything to do with personnel should not include the council. Okay. Anything to do with interviewing uh, potential commissioners, and we've just finished discussing this, and the, the council has voted on this, and there's a slight change, and that is one of the propositions 
before council was that the entire council an interview be conducted before the entire council that was voted down and so and in the past what we had was subcommittee which is mayor and mayor pro tem and the chair of the the commission that was changed a little bit to the mayor one other council member and the head of the commission now, I'm not going to go into the reasons why all of this came up. Did you just say, I'm sorry, you just said the head of the commission? Is that different from the chair of the commission? No, it's the same thing. Okay. I misspoke, the chair. <laughs> so, um, when we do interview for appointments, it will now be the mayor, one other council member, and that'll be on a rotating basis, and the chair of whichever commission. So the council is involved in appointments to the commissions. We are not involved in personnel and should not be involved in personnel. So that's why I say I think this should be rewritten. Okay. This section uh, B that we're talking about here doesn't have anything to do with the commissioners. It has to do with the personnel that are operating the rec, the, the rec program. So we're talking about two different things. What? B, this B that uh, she just read. Um, this only that, has this uh, only has to do with the personnel. It doesn't have any. It doesn't say anything about the appointments or anything of the commissioners. I think what's confusing is is it, it all of these are prefaced with the statement up top that the Parks and Recreation Commission shall have the following powers and duties. So if I read that then as a commissioner to aid and advise the council or city manager in the selection of properly qualified personnel to conduct the recreation program of the city, then I as a commissioner think that that would be a, a duty and a power that I have as a commissioner. Yeah, personally I agree with what you said. That whole section should doesn't need to necessarily be rewritten pretty much needs to be just stricken well I think uh, the, uh, the city manager has the option of putting together an interview board and he can if he chooses to and he can make it up however he wants to right I mean, but the not our responsibility. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, I, I would think, I agree with everything that's being said, but I think w what we're getting at is I think it would be um, the council or, or the, the uh, commission's right to have a person set on an interview committee for somebody in the directorship position. I don't think that lower staff <clears throat> or anything like that, um, and I, I know, Randy, that, that you know, it... it, it well, Go ahead. No, I don't. I that would be a nice option to have, and that would be up to the city manager to decide that. But I don't think it needs to be specified oh, no, in here. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that needs to be required to do that. No, no. And and I think that uh, um, I think that didn't you sit in on uh, on a, a couple items before, uh, Randy? No, you didn't. No, and and um, and, and it's interesting. That it, let's use Dale. Dale's termination as a for example. Um, none of us were aware that she was going to be terminated, and none of us had any discussions with the city manager about her termination. And to be honest with you, it took probably all of us by surprise, but ultimately we all accepted the fact that that was the city manager's job. And, and exactly. I don't think, I, there was, I mean, I know I personally did not go and talk um, to anyone regarding it. Um, um, because again, it's just an opinion, and it's not a responsibility, and it's not a duty. So um, uh, that's what I'm saying. I think some of this is. Uh, I can see why we could remove it. It probably wouldn't hurt anything. Um, I would probably say keep the word aid and take advice out of it, but because aid opens up the opportunity to be a part of some committee. But maybe we're open to that part anyway, without having it written into any bylaw or, well, I, or any I, understanding I, I think it is I think that uh, um, 
if somebody's going to be on there to be appointed and everything, I, th I, I, I'm sure. I don't know, Steve, if, and and we can't. You know, Rob's not here, but I think he's going to reach out to individuals and put a panel together. And whether he asks us or not, it, it's up to him. He is the manager of this uh, of the city department. Would we like it? I'm sure you probably you know would. But when we get below the directorship, we we should have nothing. To do with the hiring or or even sitting on a panel for somebody in, in that that should be the uh, interim director or or Steve and and the city council or I mean that we we should step away because there's legalities that are in that too that we don't want to get into and I'm sure the city attorney can come up with reasons that we can well it states it already on that first sheet about um, uh, knowing somebody or advising to hire somebody that you um, no, personally, there's terms in here, but aside from that, so again, if we want to just go to line item B and and we want to say tonight as a group we want to strike it, let's strike it. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not opposed to it. Um, I'm, again, ultimately the city manager runs this the city, and ultimately the city manager reports to the city council. If the city manager hires poor employees, ultimately he'll suffer the consequences of his acts. And Ryan, do you have any comment? Well. Too, I do think no. He would. He's not the only one that would suffer the consequences. The the city would, and we're part of the advice piece of that. And the second part is, I think Sage and Sunday both have pretty strong opinions on B. And we talked about, at least from the last meeting that we discussed this, I thought that they had pretty strong opinions that are counter to what we're saying right now. And at least it'd be worth listening to. I could be wrong, but okay. But what no, they were, no, I agree, and that's why I think that that that. A lot of these areas right now should be either um, a, a, a committee or we all just get together at a, at a private time where it's not, you know, um, and work on this and then come back on uh, at a council meeting or a, at a uh, um, uh, commission and say, okay, this is what we've all decided on and this is how we want to read it. Actually, I think this is the best forum because right now exactly what um, Mr. Boyd said um, was the fact that one we all need to be heard two we need to be we need to allow the public if they would like to come and contribute regarding a specific topic and three ultimately I think again it's all going to come back to the city manager has responsibilities and duties exactly. and the city council has responsibilities and duties and we're just trying to determine is that one of ours so um, um, I'm glad we're talking about that. Why don't we keep B in as the discussion that we did today, and let's just move to C, and we'll come back to B when we have a full body. And just another quick comment. We're not asking the commission to take any right. final action, action tonight. tonight. Right. We're just continuing right. through it, so they'll, they'll, there will be further opportunities okay. for. Uh, okay. Um, well, moving down the list then, uh, is there any questions about uh, C, which is to formulate policies and plans for the care and conduct of all public parks now or hereafter owned or operated by the city? Well, I kind of like this, um, Steve. You started out with, uh, I think you're speaking a little bit on behalf of Rob, um, and as you have your uh, um, your management hat on and not your commission, Rec and Park Commission hat on, um, is there anything in here that you would just that you see that you would like to talk or has greater need or value to talk about tonight versus just going down C D E F and G? Um, well, I, I I think again it's it's um, I, I think it's it's a language issue when you get to um, I don't necessarily have an issue with what they're trying to accomplish there, but when you when you get to paragraph H um, it has the commission basically submitting to the council through the city manager annually a proposed budget for the ensuing fiscal year. I, I don't know, A, if we've done that in the past, so if we haven't, then I kind of question that. Um, as you know, we, we like I said, it's, I think it's really just a matter of the, the language here. Um, uh, certainly from a staff's perspective we feel very strongly that um, we do not want to be going forward with any recommendations to the council on the budget for the parks until this body has had a chance to look at it and weigh in and give its opinion um, 
but again it kind of reads as if the commission is actually the one who's responsible to to submit that uh, that budget request so it it may be a matter of just kind of uh, I think uh, that's just a verbiage language. change I mean the city manager presents to the commission the upcoming you know, fiscal year budget and you know we act on advice or or uh, um, and you know we christen it or something yeah it's almost like it's it's it's, it's backwards yeah a little bit yeah well, I, I think in the past that's probably been the biggest angst of this commission is the clarity or the unclarity of our role regarding um, the fiscal responsibilities of this department with the city i think that's been our biggest issue i think we solved it when we all recognize that we're not a part of that what we are is we're a part of the body that just reviews it based on the information provided by you two or the head of the department but we're not writing the the budget all we're doing is reviewing the budget and we're a sounding board to the person writing it so even before rob writes it rob's receiving it from his department head and all this is saying is and again it has to be reworded is that we're just a review of that budget exactly um and ultimately you have to um the, the director of parks and recreation has to submit it but he doesn't you know we're advising and you well, know we're, we're not telling him what and, to do and, or and i think the director of the parks and recreation you know either steve soft whatever I, I i think that they can also at the commission's meeting when they have that information and say you know i i, I kind of think this is lean and i would like to move some of this stuff around a little bit can i make a recommendation on behalf of the commission to to move stuff around if we agree i, I mean but as far as the budget the budget's there and it, it's uh, um, it, it's something that they try to go ahead and uh, work within, and whether the revenue spikes or, or you know, good for, good for us. But I can see where this is the verbiage, and it just needs to be reversed a little bit. Well, some of the verbiage, but again, I think the other thing is is again with with. Uh, um, I remember d distinctly my first year on this commission that we were told that uh, um, the recreation had to cut $160,000 out of their budget. Um, so the commission took it upon themselves as, oh my God, that, that's our responsibility. You know whose responsibility it was? It wasn't ours, it was the director's. And then what happened is ultimately we were drug into a director and commission versus the world. And that's, um, I could have sworn we've resolved that issue. Um, we, um, we believe, and I'll speak for us, that um, the director of this department writes the budget. Um, we're a review of that, and we're the and we're also the venue where citizens can come in and talk about their needs or specific needs or or things of that nature. But ultimately, th this budget is going to be directed by um, written by you, Steve, and and Stoffelkais. Totally agree. So well, and again, I would say that it's it's a um, I mean it's a continuous process. I mean, you know, some of the discussions we're having about you know outdoor basketball courts and things like that. I mean, you would expect that throughout the year that the, all that is being you know listened to and considered and put into play in various ways, so that when it comes time to put the budget plan together, it's not being done in a vacuum. It's right. being done with all this input and feedback right. that we've been receiving throughout the year. I think one of the bigger issues would be the um, again the when you take a look at the Ojai Day, you know that's something that um, that the commission was passionate about how it was going to be funded, or was it going to be funded, and I think that that's what we that's what we needed to be, but ultimately that funding resided with the city council and um, the city manager. Um, you know again that's that's go ahead, Carlin. You know, I'm, as I'm listening, I'm I'm trying. To, I can see where some of the com conflicts come are coming from, and when I do spot them, uh, I'll speak out. And at the risk of opening a can of worms here, many of the commissions, but not all of the commissions, have their own separate budget. I'll give you an example: the Arts Commission. The Arts Commission has a specific budget and it in, involves um, grants, 
art purchases, maintenance, etc. But not all commissions have that budget. That budget is totally within their, con their uh, control to recommend. They work their budget and present it to the city council for approval. I don't know if the Parks and Rec Commission has a, a budget apart from that. I don't think so. No, we don't. Uh, and not that we're aware of. And so that may be where well, some of the confusion has come from. Some commissions do have a separate budget. But city budget is staff and the council. Does that right. help well, at all? Well, again, I think we're talking perceptions um, of w what we perceived our responsibilities were and the reality of what they are. And again, that's what we're trying to clarify here. And again, I think in the past, there was a perception that this commission was a part of that budget writing process. Yes. And I think um, uh, over this year and, and the past year, we've resolved that and come to the strong conclusion that is not our responsibility. However, we should have a responsibility to, like Steve said, be a part of, of uh, the five-year plan, to be a part of um, uh, helping establish priorities of the facilities um, in the city. Uh, you know, th that's what, that's, I think, is what our role is. And, and through rewriting this is going to help us to clarify that. But I don't, um, again, I don't believe we're a part of the uh, of writing the, the budget. I think that that's, um, we're just, we're here to review it and again to help um, move around or, or uh, Basically, we're re reviewing comment. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, e exactly. That's it. That, that's, that's all we are. We should be doing review, comment. But something that is. Uh, Sometimes inspired. And one yeah. of the things that council began, um, I, don't, I don't recall now if we meet with the commissions twice a year. Or once a year? I, once I think year. I think I think you're meeting twice with planning commission, maybe, and once with the others. Right. Maybe I'm At wrong. At any rate, the reason for the council choosing to do that is so that we could get more direct, stronger input from the commissioners. What do you see is um, a preference from the the citizens? Right. And so, in that in that respect, you do influence the budget. And maybe that's the better word. You do influence the budget. Right, but we don't physically write Certainly. the budget. Right. right. But council wants to hear from you about what should be put on the list of things that we should be working on. Because that does have an impact. Because once the council hears your list, then it's probably going to remind staff that, you know, planning commission recommended X, Y, and Z. And right. so that it does have an impact, and that's one reason we, we want to meet at least once a year. I thought it was twice. But. Well, I also think that that's why um, uh, uh, someone from management sits on, on each of the commissions, mm -hmm. is so that there is that level of communication that w what's discussed here and what's um, brought to his or her's uh, attention is taken upstairs or um, and the, in turn is shared with the council through Rob's office. That was my opinion. I, in, in fact, again, it's a learn. It's a learning curve. When I first came here, I thought Dale ran the meeting. Seriously, I thought she ran the commission, and because she wrote the agenda, she did all of this, all of these things, and, and my, seriously, no one had told me any differently. But as this commission's evolved, this commission has evolved into I think what it is today, which is again, it's an interactive commission, um, and we're the ears and the uh, in the mouths for the citizens of this. Uh, the wonderful valley and again we're we're just one level of of um, the communication to the city council and to the city manager mm -hmm. so we could strike anything as far as i'm concerned it has to do with well, money out of this thing and, and <laughs> so to to kind of um the city manager can hire a fire staff absolutely but you commissioners belong to us as we should. As you should. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Steve. So um, again, I think there's some verbiage in some of this, and and uh, some, 
you know, some words that could be, you know, changed. And, and, uh, and again, this is just our, um, the three most vocal. Um, okay. you, would you like to add anything to what we've said? Austin, do you have any comments? Yeah. The, um, if I may, Chair Haney, the other section here that perhaps seems out of place that we should probably discuss is uh, subparagraph I, which uh, identifies as a, as a power and duty of the commission to formulate policies and plans for the planting, care, and removal of trees, shrubs, and flowers in public streets and parkways and in all public places within the city. That's public um, works. Yeah, I would agree. Um, well, because it, because of course, it's up, because Chair it's Haney my, is uh, something, I, yeah. Right, because it's in my background, I would probably <laughs> strike the word, um, uh, what's the first uh, two, what was I strike? I struck it already. I would just put review policies and plans. There's so much of this, it's just a word or, or two of changing. Again, um, the, the, uh, uh, Greg and his staff do an incredible job, and I don't think there's anyone that's told anyone to put an annual over here or an annual over there, or um, they're doing a good job with their resources. So, uh, okay. Okay. All right. So, um, great. Thank you. We got through I. I think we can talk officers and committees later on. I think we've um, done quite a bit for this evening. Yeah, we actually touched on officers and committees at the at the previous meeting, and um, just to remind everybody, and and we did not see any um, any need to change that. Okay. But again, all of this is continues. And none of it is uh, off limits for future discussion. And um, based on the the feedback uh, the received tonight, we'll we'll bring something back at at the next meeting and uh, see where the commission would like to go at that time. Okay, so quickly I'm going to go to, does um, any of the commissioners have any reports or any comments they'd like to make? And Carlin, you have the floor one more time if you would like it. Every time I give him the mic back, I get to talk <laughs> again. That's great. I like the way that works. Um, uh, just a couple of things that I wanted to mention. We, we just finished going over the auditor's report for fiscal year 12-13. And... You know, we have been through several years of just bone-crunching agony economically. And so I wanted to let you know that the city of Ojai is operating in the black. Bingo. And this coming year is looking to be very um, good for us economically which means it'll give us a little bit of breathing room so that we can take on some of the repairs, that, uh, some of the improvements we need to do. Still at the top of the council's list, I'm sorry, you're in there, but not up there. Uh, first on our list is uh, the economic viability of the city of Ojai, that is number one. Uh, the second is we have to get a, a handle on our streets, our capital improvements, specifically streets. Our streets, um, we've let them go for many years and a lot of things happen to undermine their integrity. So we have to keep a handle on that. So a lot of our monies will be going in that direction. And so far we've been very good about setting aside approximately 500000 a year. That may sound like a lot. It isn't when you get to uh, roadways. But if we continue it, we will get an upper hand on this. We went through, and one of the things I asked at the budget meeting was, um, number 32, uh, parks, parks Recreation. The $20,000, well, $20,700 that became an issue in the last year, Right. And so when I was looking at the audit, I noticed that it was 20,000 of it was gone. And so one of the things I brought up is one, where did it go? Two, was that with the commission's approval? And I have your balance here. So in response, 
um, it went towards some of the improvements taking place at Sarasota Park. And it did come before this commission, and it was with your approval that we... Well, I, I think there may have been a misunderstanding there. I, I, I'm not sure. That doesn't seem to drive with my recollection. I know that we talked about some of the the year-end savings and we had talked at this commission and I remember because Mr. Grant was here and we talked about wanting to have a higher contingency for that project. Yes, we talked and about that. And that was coming. That wasn't from that. That's, that's correct. That was not from the park and rec tax. That was from the. That is what you're speaking of, our mysterious I, park I am and specifically speaking. So if there is Odd. an error or a misconception, I want to know about it. I am specifically referring to the 20700 that was in the parks acquisition. And there, there may be another title that they, they use for and that. We, we, the I tax, think we know what you're talking about. To my I, recollection, the commission has never uh, addressed spending that money. Sage spoke okay. beyond the rather passionately about possibly taking that money and starting our master plan. Exactly. Okay. And that's as far as I'm aware that we ever got even talking about that mysterious money. Yes. That's that correct. Okay. That that's would be a good investment to start our master plan. All right. Yes. And that's very good to know. And I will follow up on this. And I'm your liaison for the next three months. Lucky you. And I will, <laughs> I will bring a report back uh, next time because I specifically ask where it went and it's on the improvements to Sarasota Park did it have the Commission's authority and the answer was yes so I will find out where the uh, miscommunication is happening well, I would have to go back and pull the the definition of that fund but if I remember correctly that fund specifically was not for improvements no, well, I think or more tax or whatever I, the heck it was. I think more importantly, there's going to be a record of the of the conversation. Yeah, I will and track it down specifically. Telling, um, I think I, 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 I I'm trying to remember the last conversation with Greg um, when he was talking about Sarazoti or Sarazadi. Is it Zadi or Zodi? And um, and I think one of our comments to him was if there was additional <laughs> funding or savings somewhere to um, get as much done as he possibly could. I think, I think there was some type of that, but I don't think there was any, any discussion as to where to get that funding. Okay, and I think I'm seeing where the uh, confusion uh, is coming from because you were, you did have a, I do not want to use the word surplus, right. but, <laughs> but you had um, your, your estimated budget and your actual budget. Right, right. Um, and and I have a feeling that's where the confusion came from. I think but so. I will track it down and we'll get yeah. back to you. Okay. Uh, the surplus did not us as commissioners want to put that into um, our recommendation would have been. Okay. <laughs> the recommendation was to to have the surplus available, available but it was that. not <coughs> coming Excuse out me. of that. Yeah. fund or tax yeah. or whatever that yeah. that thing is and, right. and in fact regarding that tax i think that we had asked to um uh visit it for next fiscal year and figure out how we can adopt um um, um an increase yeah. in, the fee yeah. in the fee structure and that bit. and who we um you know because we don't have a lot of development mm -hmm. you know how we could attach that maybe to um uh, remodels or something of that nature that's what we were looking at i will have you a clearer report next okay. month oh and it's not that far away is it no. <laughs> two you, weeks you really confused me with the 23rd or whatever <laughs> today is it's, i i called steve and i said what happened i'm ready to go to the uh, parks and rec you okay. moved it um something else i wanted to to mention is over the last year, the Parks and Rec Department has done an incredible job. I hear from people when things are not going well. And I have not been receiving phone calls or comments. 
and they're usually negative. Every now and then I get a good, you're doing a good job, but rarely. People call me when, when there are problems that they want adjusted. So I have not been getting any calls, and um, that tells me that the commission and the parks and recs department have, have done an incredible uh, job. Right I, I think yeah. these two gentlemen and here staff. Yes. need yeah. to take the yeah. bow yeah. for that. Well, it's also a good team of staff at the rec department too that yes. make a difference. And I, I have a feeling you've had a, a real impact on our community as far as drawing people back to the, the, uh, the programs in the rec department and, and just a, a better exchange with the, between the citizens in the city. So uh, thank you and I appreciate that. Now, this is sort of one of those negotiating things. <laughs> I know that the commission would like to have meetings at Sarasota Park. And I have been opposed to that in the past. But we can film commission meetings at the park. It's, it's difficult. But we're going to be recommending, and, and we will come up with a plan, to, um, to get some additional equipment that's needed so that filming at Sarasota Park will be a much easier thing. Okay. So that's my negotiating point. Uh, I, I think you had a good idea, and I'm, I'm coming around now. I think it would be a good idea to have meetings at Sarasota Park, as long as the public knows where they are, as long as they can have access, and now they have access via video. And, and so I think it's a good idea. I think especially uh, since you mentioned that you get a better res uh, attendance. Right. I don't know why. So uh, I have that on my list of things to do. We can do it now, but it's difficult. Right. And so we'll, we'll see what we can do about getting do, it. Uh, I guess, Carla, my question is, do all um, commission meetings, once they've been started, once they've been filmed, do they have to be continually filmed? I mean, is there something that says that we, ha that we That's have to? That's the city council's preference. So once you start, they want... Your well, it took us a long time to talk you into it. Oh, I understand that. Um, uh, I'm just saying that, so in other words, I guess what I'm trying to say is if we went every other meeting or if we went um, quarterly, no. you know, once every three months and we met at Sarasota, um No. Uh, now I'm speaking, and I may not be accurate, but I'm still going to speak on behalf of the city council. And that is we would like all of the parks and rec meetings televised okay and that's actually more what I mean when I say film that's right. you know I'm right. old uh, we would like all of the meetings televised because it's a way to encourage response and participation from the community not everyone is going to take the time to attend a meeting and as a result of that a lot of times we get a, a surge of opposition or support after the fact right way after the fact and that will, uh, televising the meeting will help that. And you'll get used to it. And I think you'll start getting um, more, uh, a higher attendance. But I, I, I do think we should have some of the meetings at Sarasota Park. We can do it now, but we need additional equipment to do it better. All right. Okay. So I have that on my list, and I'll remember it. Um, I had put on the basketball court, but you... Um, you already have that on the yeah. upcoming list, so. So I'm. Between that and ten man teams, I mean, so we got a hammer. <laughs> we got that hammered out tonight. You know the the ten man versus eight man teams. I I don't have any input on that, and which is rare for me. I can usually input on it, anything, but I do enjoy the conversation, <laughs> and so I'll be interested in see where this ends to see where this ends up. I and have, yes, I have a basketball background. I can appreciate the ten man team. Certainly I and I coached Matillaha's basketball I coached Matillaha's basketball team for a couple of years. I know the complexity of trying to run a practice with four people or five people as you mentioned, and it is a problem um, at times. And including game time, it can be a problem at times. So I'm not. I, I'm so if if it if it came across as trying to stonewall a, a, an idea or a potential 
fix to a potential problem? Absolutely not. You know, I always will do what's in the best interest of the league and the players in the league and the parents that are participating in that league. And if that means going 10 per team, then so be it. Um, so I think we can we, revisit I think we it. It, is, uh, it has been notoriously, I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to put it in perspective that it's, it's been run this way for a while. And I'm not a big fan of we've always done it that way. As, I'm the last person to agree with that kind of philosophy. Philosophy. I'm just telling you, it's it's not something that we changed just a year ago or two years ago. It is all the numbers have all is as far as I know, at least in my 11 years. That's how the league has been set up. That's how it's been run, and um, and there is a big push by participants in the program to have lower numbers on each team so there can be more playing time. That's the drive. That, and I'll just leave it at that, but it doesn't mean we can't put 10 on a team. It will, it will inevitably, it will reduce the amount of playing time that each player gets. There's, there's no way around that. Hmm. Well, I, th I think what we were trying to do is um, but I'll take an Brian, old... Brian's ready to go again. No, 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 no. no. I, I think what we were trying to... I think we were implying is trying to teach an old dog a new trick. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And I've so noted. <laughs> okay, guys, we're not going to beat this basketball up again. Carlin, it's all yours. No, I'm finished. I just wanted to, to ask if there was anything that in particular that you wanted me to convey to council... I I know, but I know that for one thing that uh, um, I sure would like to have this policy manual, if that's what we're going to call it, for recreation and parks, ready for presentation at our uh, August session, our joint session. I think that'd be and great, and to have our capital improvement package ready for discussion on that night. Also, I know it's an hour, and maybe that's something else too that we may look at is. Why limit it to an hour if the package says we need an hour and a half? Steve. So, okay, and again, let me be clear. This isn't policy. This is the Ohio Municipal Code. Okay. And so, any changes we make here is our law. So, it, policy is a little more lenient. But what you're looking at right here is, is our municipal code. And I do see some changes that need to be done in there. It, it, you know, we just don't take the time to do these things. Like, the last time this was updated, I just love the way I took yours, uh, was in, well, that's the officers. But at the, at the very bottom of each paragraph, you'll see dates in parentheses, and the last time this was updated was 1966. And so with each section, uh, when you get to the end of it, you'll see a section telling every time it was updated and when. So it looks well, like- Well, maybe well, in 1966 they needed, they needed, the commission needed to write the budget. <laughs> well, and typically what happens is, is maybe there's a small change like the uh, members, the, the composition of the members. I think w when we started including a youth commissioner, that was last done in 95. So, but if you look at the bottom, you'll see when the last time any of this was changed. But this is our law. Our municipal well, I think that's what we noticed in that fund the um when they uh, right. you would not need to use your your funds to change the municipal code no 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 what i was saying the was date is, on the, is the date on the funds was 19 yeah oh two yeah 78 is when the last time that ordinance was looked at about uh permit okay and, and stuff so that's oh, something oh, we need to okay have. let's let's wrap this up here so do we have uh any uh commissioner comments and uh, future meeting, our date is uh, February 6th is our next meeting. And do we have, we had two items we talked about being on the agenda, Steve. Um, do you know what they were quickly um, before you pass out on us? Yeah. <laughs> um, I know. Well, we want to talk about the open house and okay. also our, our budget numbers. Okay, great. All right. Having said that. 
Could I just throw one quick, a little good of piece of, of uh, announcement? It, it, we don't have it signed, finalized on the signed on the dotted line and finalized and all that, but we um, we did receive word from Supervisor Bennett's office that they were um, that they are willing to contribute five thousand dollars annually uh, to a scholarship fund. Uh, as you would re recall, we did not receive CDBG funds right. uh, for the recre Recreation Enhancement Voucher Program, um, and so we no longer then had scholarship monies that we could give out to eligible um, low-income youth. We've since, um, we're working through a pilot program that's being funded by the city um, so that we can still provide some of those opportunities to kids. The, the CDBG REV program was 100% uh, was, was funded by the scholarship. Well, the program that we've implemented in-house, um, which I've shared with this commission before, is that they, the participants would pay 50%. So we pick up the other cost. So um, we're negotiating an agreement. Uh, should be able to work out the details pretty quick here with the county. And as I said, they'll be giving us $5,000 per fiscal year that we will put into a scholarship fund that can be used for eligible low-income youth who are not city residents. So it will allow our money for the other scholarship funds to go that much farther. So that's good news because uh, that's uh, every little bit counts. money that we've not received before in the past from the county to, to help offset the, um, the services that we provide to the county residents. So that was very good news. Great. Okay, we're adjourned. Thanks, Steve. Carlin, thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure.